Yo, what's good everybody? My name is Jay Fatty. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the best way to sample an FL Studio. We're going to go through different techniques, talk about the pros and cons of each, and then have a conclusion at the end what the best way to sample an FL Studio is. So let's get right into it. So the song we're going to be sampling today is by General Crook, and it's called Thanks But No Thanks. I'm going to leave it linked in the description and the pinned comment so you can check it out. We have it pitched down 300 cents here. I just threw it into the playlist, double clicked it, went over here to the pitch, and right up here in the top left is the hint panel. I can see how much I'm pitching it up or down, and I'm just going to go to negative 300 cents, like so. That's just to get it off its original key to avoid copyright issues, and also because it's dope to pitch things up and down and change the pitch of them. You're gonna really get some sauce that way in your sample chops. So we're gonna start in the playlist here and essentially what we wanna do is get a loop that we can then further chop up, okay? But it's essential we get the loop first because it's gonna be way easier to get it on whatever BPM we want, which I want it on 82 BPM, but this song is not on 82 BPM right now. So let's get a loop first. So over here in the song, there's this part. <laughs> Right underneath the X button on the playlist, and if I use my middle mouse button or click and drag, I can make the playlist larger or smaller so I can actually see the waveform here. And then I'm also going to hover over the black bar and I can use the middle mouse button to zoom in, okay? And I can really see this waveform here and I have colorful waveforms on. If you go to options, general settings in FL Studio 21, you can turn on colorful waveforms. And that's going to let you change the color of your waveforms by going to your theme settings. And right here is waves and you can change the color of all the different frequencies. It can help you really visualize what you're doing. First thing I'm going to do is go up here to the magnet and make sure it's on none. And I can drag this playhead right to the start of that waveform. Right at the start of this crash hit. And I'm going to press C on my keyboard to get the slicer. Just left click and drag to slice that right there. We're going to slice right at the end of four bars. Right there, right when it hits this next transient, I'm just going to slice right at the beginning of that. And now we have our loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift, left click, and then drag down. And I can copy that loop over. Now I'm just going to mute this top part. So if we zoom in here, we have our loop. And we can make sure it loops right by right clicking at the black bar and dragging, right click and drag on this red bar that comes up and drag it all the way out to the loop. Those are your loop points you just set on the beat, so let's hear if it loops or not. See how it sounded natural? That means the loop is right. So what I can do is I'm going to hold shift and right click and make unique a sample. And that's going to make this waveform just this information that we have in this loop rather than it being the whole rest of the song. And when, why we're holding shift is because if we just right click and do make unique a sample, it's going to pull up the windows browser this just bypasses that you just hold shift throughout the whole process and it bypasses that all right so now that we have this as its own loop since we already know the loop is about four bars we can just drag it out to get it correctly on grid here we're going to double click it so we can get the sample settings here and what we're going to do is make sure it's on stretch mode and then drag out the time knob to get it perfectly on four bars they make sure that your magnets on none that way it'll help you snap it right on point there Just like so. Now we have a four bar loop that's pitched down 300 cents and it's also on 82 BPM. If you want, you could continue to chop this up further into the playlist or even just loop it out. Just have that be your beat. Or this is gonna be your first step for throwing the loop into Fruity Slicer or slice x but the thing is you can also do everything we just did here inside edison some people would rather just throw the song into edison and chop it in there so let's talk about edison a little bit if we click this button right up here this is going to be the open audio editor it's the scissor button and that will pull up edison just like so i'm going to drag that same song into edison as you can see it pulls the waveform up here i can make the screen bigger by going to the bottom right and dragging out just like so and we can use the middle mouse button to zoom in here. Now to pitch this down like we did in the playlist, what we're going to do is just do a control A to select all of it. 
and we can go up here to tools which is this wrench icon and i'm going to click on that and we're going to go over here to time stretch slash pitch shift and the shortcut is alt t we're going to go down here and reset this and just go to pitch course this will let us bring it down to negative three which is the same thing as negative 300 it's just in semitones rather than cents because 100 cents equals one semitone we'll just drag this down to negative three semitones and if we hit preview <laughs> You'll be able to hear what's going on there and we'll just hit accept Give it a second and then there it pitch shift it for us. So now we're gonna find that loop So the loops right here notice when I hit play on Edison Follow along there with the waveform which can be nice sometimes but say I'm looking over at a different part of the waveform But I have an area that's highlighted over here and I hit play to push me over to that area and that can get very annoying so what we're gonna do is turn that off and it's down here at the bottom right it's this button this arrow button just turn that off and that will get rid of that problem now essentially it's the same process but within Edison to get that loop we're just gonna go up here to the snap make sure we're on zero crossing this time and let's start right here at the beginning of that waveform double click and drag like so this just lets us get way deeper into the waveform you can start to see the points in the waveform so all of these circles are the zero crossing so we'll just put it about somewhere right there and we'll just drag this part to the end of the loop right there we'll just drag it right to the start of that next four bars we can really go in here and put it on the best zero crossing to get the best loop. Now, if we hit this button right here, this infinity sign, we can see if it'll loop properly. Yeah, that loops pretty good. Now with my area highlighted there, I can left click on this button right here, left click and drag to the playlist. And there's my loop. And now we got to do the same thing we did before and time stretch it to the grid. We'll double click and put it on stretch mode. Thing just a little bit louder than the other one. Now the difference between doing this in Edison and the playlist is honestly personal preference. If you like Edison, you can just do it then if it might be a bit faster in the playlist, but it all it's honestly what you work better with. I've done it thousands of times in the playlist, so I'm a lot quicker with it. If you worked on it, you know, way more in Edison, you'll probably be quicker with it over there. So once again, personal preference on how you want to get the loop. I just wanted to show that to you. So now that we have our loop, we're going to want to solidify all of these time stretch settings in it. The quickest way to do that is just right click the track that it's on and consolidate track from track start and hit start. And that's going to render all of those effects onto that loop. Now we can drag it into a fruity slicer. So we'll open up fruity slicer here. So what I can do is I'm going to double click the sample, go back into the channel rack, and I'm going to drag this waveform onto fruity slicer. <laughs> All right, so now we got Fruity Slicer here. I'm gonna drag it out so we can get it larger. And what we can do is, since this is already looped up, we're just gonna click this slice button and we can slice it on any one of these. But if you just want some quick chops, just put it on B. And now this is gonna put it on C5 on your MIDI keyboard. And as you can tell, it's a little quiet. So we'll go in here into the settings go over here to the wrench and bring the volume up also going to bring the attack and decay up a little bit just to try to mitigate any clicks and pops we can also pitch shift it and time shift it more here but we don't need to since we did all that before now you can also click on any one of these chops and you can hit this rev button which is just going to reverse it so if you want something like that, that's pretty much it with Fruity Slicer. It's very simple. That's why it's one of the best for beginners because it's very straightforward. As long as you get your loop right, you're not going to have many troubles. Now it's evolved form is Slice X. You can do everything that you can do here in Fruity Slicer, but much more in Slice X. Slice X pretty much has Edison built into it. So let's check Slice X out. What you can easily do to get to Slice X is if you double click the waveform here, right click on the waveform in the audio settings, and then go to open a new Slice X channel. 
And it's gonna pull it up in Slice X for you. As you can see, you already have many more settings in Slice X. So what we're gonna do is do a Control A to highlight all this and go to the regions and do delete to delete all of the current markers and then click it again and do auto slice and do medium grid slicing. That'll put it on bars for us. Just like before, but what we can also do is add in our own chops here. So we delete these and just zoom in. Say we want to chop right here on the start of this. We can just click M on the keyboard or go into the regions and hit add marker. And we'll just call this chop. And that's going to put it on C5. It's going to start at C5 and whatever chops you put after it will just go down the piano roll. As you can see, all of these buttons up here are the same buttons inside Edison. It's the exact same buttons. They just pretty much moved it into Slice X. So you have a whole audio editor built into Slice X that you can do all sorts of different stuff. For example, if we go to tools right here, you can fade in, fade out, de-click in, de-click out, reverse, time stretch, slash pitch shift, as well as a bunch of other really more in-depth effects like adding reverb, equalizing the samples, trimming up the noise, acquiring different noise thresholds to help you trim up the noise. And there's also scripts here, like bit reduction, different saturations, as well as even generating different sound waveforms on top of the audio that you got. In addition to that, you can also add in certain filters to your chops. That's what this part is up here, the articulator. And right here, you wanna put this on either single filter, double or triple. We'll just put it on triple and then we can mess with the envelopes, cut off and resonance. And the chop is played, whatever settings you put on here will be affecting that. And you can even manipulate it as you're playing it. You can even further mess with the filter and the envelope of the filter as well as the LFO and a bunch of other more in-depth crazy settings that you can mess with here on your own as well as panning the chop. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff. It looks very complicated. That's one of the cons about Slice X is it looks complicated. It doesn't seem very user friendly. To be honest, I just use Fruity Slicer because it's way quicker than this. But it's once again depends on personal preference. You might rather have Slice X and have all these different settings and really be able to get down to the nitty gritty of the sample. Someone like me, I just want to make, you know, some simple beats. Simple but effective is a nice mantra that I like to live by. Just like Fruity Slicer, it's going to help immensely if your loop is already looped correctly and you have all of those pitch and time settings on it correctly. Now these are all default FL Studio plugins. They're built into FL Studio, right? But to be honest, the best way to sample an FL Studio for me is using a third party plugin, which a lot of people know it's Serato Sample. It just speeds up the process and helps with your creativity way more than these other two because these other two feel a little clunky. So the cool thing with Serato is we can completely cut out the first steps that we did for Slice X and Fruity Slicer where we had to get the loop in the playlist. We don't got to do that with Serato. We can just pull Serato up, throw the sample into Serato and bring the key down negative three semitones just like before and it has its own built-in editor here so we can drag around here and quickly get that loop so with the playhead right on the start of the waveform we can click it right here and we don't have to necessarily loop it in there it's just going to get the chop for us See, this puts it on C3 for me rather than C5 on the keyboard. So earlier, I already got all the chops that I wanted. Check out how much more intricate this loop is. And it took half the time, maybe 10 minutes to get all these chops rather than doing what we did before where we're going to have to loop everything and get it all right. You know, this just saves so much more time. It's game changing, to be honest. So here's the loop that I got.
You see what I'm saying? It helps you get way more intricate loops in half the time. So if you can invest in Serato Sample, definitely check it out. Don't get me wrong. I used Fruity Slicer and the playlists and all that for years and made bangers. So it really is subjective and what you like to do and what works best for you. So in conclusion, what works best for me is Serato Sample. Try all of these if you can. Find the best process for you and just go with that. Practice, 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 and you're going to be bringing it to a science eventually and be able to do some crazy beats on a consistent level. I have in-depth videos on each one of these programs, Fruity Slicer, Slice X, and Serato. I'm going to link the playlist to those videos down below if you're interested in watching those. Also, if you're looking for royalty-free samples, you can check the link in the description in the pinned comment to Vault Sounds. They got some really great, high-quality sounds. It's a group of really talented producers that make some really dope stuff a lot of it sounds like stuff from records and it's royalty free so you can check it out with the link in the description and pinned comment if you use the promo code jfatty you'll get 20 percent off your order that's pretty much it if this video brought you value make sure you leave a like hit subscribe and hit the little bell make sure you stay safe stay striving and always be getting it much love y'all peace